Greetings, everyone. What, you still don't know? Who are you gonna call? Okay, I can only milk that joke for so long. Part two of the Real Ghostbusters Complete Series DVD set review. Now, today, on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So, before we... As I drop off the bottom of the screen, I guess I'll just keep sitting up. Before we uh, <laughs> take a look at the now, I thought we'd take a little look at the then. Yes, you know me. I like to sort of look at the history of a show and how it has fared over the years on home video. Well, The Real Ghostbusters has quite a peppered history. It had gotten to the point where I think a lot of fans had pretty much lost all hope that we would ever see any kind of proper release of it on any format. Um, the very first time The Real Ghostbusters appeared on any type of home video format was, of course, on VHS back in 1986 and 87, when there was a series of VHS releases released. VHS releases released. Yeah, anyway. This is all of them. There are seven volumes. Most of them, like these, only had one episode apiece on them. Oh, and this one. And then they released two volumes with three episodes apiece. So yes, there was a grand total of 11 episodes <laughs> available on home video. And for a very long time, that's all that was available officially. In fact, a very, very long time. Because it wasn't until 19, or sorry, 2006, that we got this. And we also got this. And finally, we got this. Exciting, huh? Fans were excited to finally be able to have some episodes of The Real Ghostbusters on DVD in beautiful remastered quality. And for the 20th anniversary, no less, because it was 20 years after the original cartoon had premiered. But, <laughs> there's only four episodes per disc. They're all single disc releases. And most of those 12 episodes total were ones that were already available on the old VHS releases. So it's like, okay... The whole series is 147 episodes long. You couldn't think to maybe release some that we haven't seen for 20 years? Yeah. The other thing was, uh, there was the uh, special edition of Ghostbusters 2 on DVD. Actually, one second, I'll grab it. Da! Yes, I have this edition. Um, little side note, the individual disc releases that were put out before this uh, two-disc slim pack edition actually had more extras at least for the first one. The second one never really had much in the way of extras. But the only special features that were on uh, the second one were two episodes of the real Ghostbusters. And that's it. There was nothing about the movie. There was just nothing. <laughs> it does come with this cool collector's book, though, with all kinds of uh, kind of jammed in there. All kinds of cool production artwork and stuff. And even a little ad for Stay Puft Marshmallows on the back, which is quite nice. So anyway, so between the two episodes on the Ghostbusters 2 disc and the 12 randomly selected episodes on those three single disc volumes, there was nothing for the real Ghostbusters on DVD. I remember reading an article on uh, TVShowsOnDVD.com at the time that those three volumes came out. Um, and it was Sony who, of course, had the license and I guess still still owns it, technically. Um, they just licensed it out to Time Life to do the complete set. Um, TV shows on DVD.com got in touch with some, somebody from Sony, basically from their uh, cartoon division, and their attitude was that all cartoons are should be treated as if, you know, they're just for kids. In fact, the, the response that they got, in, like they asked, why is there, is there going to be some kind of a complete series set release? There's a lot of fans of the show who would really like to see the whole thing put out. 
And the only response they got back was, you know it's a cartoon, right? Excuse me? <laughs> yeah, we know it's a cartoon. What does that have to do with anything? It's a frickin' awesome cartoon. And is deserving of the deluxe treatment. Well, apparently nobody at Sony thought that it was. And uh, decided to license it out to Time Life. Who was quite clear on the potential profitability of such a release. And that's why, finally, we have the complete series release. So, I wanted to give you a quick look just at the covers here of the, uh, the VHS ones. There's one in particular. Yeah, there's this one here. Which was uh, the cover for Knock Knock. And you remember I showed you the cover for Volume 4 and said it was kind of reminiscent of some of the promotional artwork? Well, take a look. Huh. I don't know. You see a similarity there? Hmm. New version? Old version? New version, old version. I actually prefer this version because I think it's a little more badass. You know, Slimer looks like he's in absolute agony there getting zapped. And let's face it, we all want to see him suffer as much as possible. Whereas there he's like, hee hee hee, ha ha ha, it's fun, wee! And they're not actually blasting Slimer, he's just kind of along for the ride. But here, they're clearly blasting Slimer. <laughs> so... Yeah, you can't uh, can't go wrong there. Uh, then, of course, we have the bird. I'm going to show you these in no particular order, because why not? They were in random order on the VHS releases anyway. We've got uh, the Bird of Killed Arby and other stories. This also has Night Game and Lost and Foundry. Then we've got the Revenge of Murray the Mantis and other stories. Special appearance by the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in that one, uh, which also features Drool the Dog-Faced Goblin and Ghostbuster of the Year. Then we've got Ghost Fight at the OK Corral. Now, the cool thing about these VHS releases is at the time when these were put out, um, I believe only the first season had actually aired on television, so a lot of these episodes were appearing for the first time on home video, actually before they even aired on television. So that's pretty cool. Fright at the Opera. These ones are all single episodes. Um, play Them Ragtime Booze, which is quite good. In case you're curious as to where most of these episodes fall into the continuity, you'll actually find the majority, if not all of these, on Volume 1. I smell food. What the hell? I don't know. Somebody must be standing outside my window with food. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what else I want to show you? Ooh, yeah. Uh, the real Ghostbusters, needless to say, was hugely popular when it was on. Uh, there was a lot of tie-ins. There was toys, like crazy. Now, of course, the show originally was just done as a show to tie in with uh, the movie. I'm looking at the flip-out screen, in case you're wondering why I keep looking over. It's very distracting, but I always like to do that to make sure I'm centered. Um, but it was such a huge hit that a lot of merchandise appeared almost immediately uh, tying into the cartoon. Now, I was... A lot of people are probably going to slam me for this, but I, I, never, I was never really big into toys so much. I mean, I love, I love toys. Don't get me wrong. I love toys. I was just never big on collecting them. I mean, to some extent, yeah, like I do have a lot of Transformers, and when I was younger, I got a lot of the original Star Wars toys and Micronauts and stuff like that. Still have them. I'll probably show them to you in a future video. Um, but for me, the stuff that I really enjoyed more than anything else was uh, stories. So for me, the tie-ins to shows and movies or whatever that were of most, the most interest to me were ones that told new stories featuring those characters and settings. So I liked stuff like the comic books of the real Ghostbusters that came out. I only have a few issues, unfortunately, but uh, here we go. I'll give you a look at some covers. This issue 8. So I've got issues 8 through 12. It's quite nice. But uh, the comic was pretty good, actually. You know, there's <laughs> the devil with a big nuclear bomb, and then we got the devil sitting on the bomb and Slimer about to set it off. Yeah, that, that's something... I don't know if you'd see something like that in the TV show. It's, even though the TV show did push a lot of boundaries and broke a lot of ground, there's uh, issue 12. So as you can see, they had some multi-issue story arcs. And then, there we go. So anyway... Very cool stuff. I definitely like to get some more of the uh, the comic books. 
I think they make a nice companion to the uh, to the cartoon series. Uh, and that was, of course, put out by Now Comics, who anybody who collected comics in the 80s is probably familiar with them. They did a lot of uh, tie-ins uh, with movies and TV shows. They did the real Ghostbusters, they did uh, Speed Racer, and The Phone is Ringing. Well, that was a good series. Fright Night was another one. The Green Hornet, uh, Racer X, which was a Speed Racer tie-in. Uh, Married with Children. Yeah, there was a comic book based on Married with Children. Can you believe that? Uh, what else? Terminator. They were actually the very first company to ever produce comic books based on Terminator. A lot of people think it was Dark Horse. It wasn't. Dark Horse came later. Way later. Um, yeah, so they did all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, there was, there was a lot of real Ghostbusters stuff around for a long time, but just nothing in the way of, like, no, there just seemed to be no hope that there would ever be a complete series release. And then, along came Time Life. And not only did they give us the complete series, but they gave us the complete series with more extras than I think most mere mortals will ever have time to go through. It is just an amazing set. And we're going to take an in-depth look at it next time on the Multimedia Chronicles. So until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.